Hi everybody, welcome to GB Guns. This is Maddie AR here, just popping in to talk about a special custom build I've been working on of a Glock 34. Uh, special barrel and slide in my favorite tropical rainbow coloring uh, from Zafiri Precision. So coming up next, Graham is going to be back to tell you all about it. Stay tuned. to zoom out a little bit because well it's a 34. Um, I ran a 34 when I was three gunning it. This is it. Um, the advantage of course is you get the longer sight radius which makes steady and accurate shots a whole lot easier. You also get the longer barrel which gives you more velocity turning into more energy for knocking over steel targets, bowling pins, things like that. In fact when I moved to this gun in bowling pin matches they got just plain simply easy uh, because there was so much energy coming out of this longer barrel. This is a standard, uh, well, pseudo standard Gen 4 34. Matty AR's build here is based off the Gen 3 platform with these Zafiri Precision slide and barrel. Don't have sights on it yet, but wanted to take a look at the slide and barrel to see what made it different. All right, so of course, I'm gonna show clear and take this apart. Yes, this has been fired a couple times we wanted to see how it fit and ran this uh, Zephyr Precision is a company that I personally was not familiar with prior to Medi AR saying hey I've got this we're doing a build very very tight fit in fact if I go to get it back on here if you can hear that it's very snug and it needed probably uh, 20 30 rounds or so of breaking with heavy oil just to get it that tight it's coming back to uh, being able to function but uh, it was a very snug fit from the get-go so if you order one of these be aware of that and what that can be is machining tolerances um, this slide is obviously meant to be a performance slide it's got tighter tolerances than your standard Glock would and then the other factor could be any coatings that you do often with um, powder coating things like that it you know is adding a slight thickness a slight size to the actual material uh, this coating does not appear to it's a wonderful kind of oil slick rainbow coloring there that you can see goes all throughout did want to look at there our barrel fit since this is a Zephyr barrel in their own slide and if I get up close here we don't have any lateral movement. The vertical movement is mostly the slide on the frame, which is pretty standard. That is a pretty tight lockup. There's a little bit of room there. Not enough to really cause any issue. You're seeing movement on the rear here, but not up front because that's a flat edge. That's going to lead to enhanced accuracy. Speaking of accuracy, let's see how that barrel looks really cool rainbow oil slick effect. I like what they've done here with the fluting. It's a broad flat fluting, which of course will reduce the overall weight of the barrel a little bit, potentially assist in cooling, uh, but mostly it looks cool <laughs> and cuts down on the weight. This uh, coating treatment that they did for this color is applied inside and out can't tell you if it's in the actual bore or not. As far as chamber support, as always, we're going to check using our nozzle match. Those of you who don't follow channel, the reason why I use this stuff is uh, it has been the most consistent, precise velocity that I have tested, uh, which means that the brass, uh, as well as the powder loading, is the most consistent. Drop it in the chamber there, give it maybe a little tap, and we can see we've got a little bit of unsupported, unsupported underneath back in there, which is standard for Glock. So you've got a per Glock's recipe, non fully supported chamber. That's only a big deal if uh, you plan on reloading or running reloads. Some people say it doesn't matter at all. It's up to you. In my experience, really, it doesn't matter. Looking at this slide, we've got plenty of cutouts reducing weight 
and permitting cooling. Those of you who have run any uh, three gun or competitive shooting know that the gun can get hot. This is gonna let air flow through, but most importantly, it's gonna reduce your reciprocating mass. If you're not familiar with how recoil works in handguns, it's actually the slide usually hitting the rearward most of its travel, that impact on the frame that causes your flip, and then as it slams back and locks home, that causes a little bit of dip. Uh, if you don't believe me, watch any of our slow motion footage and you can see it happen. It's not the explosion or detonation of the round that causes that recoil, it's the slide. So the lighter your slide, the less mass you have moving, the less jarring it's gonna be on your wrist and that's gonna allow you to shoot quicker and get back on target quicker. Beyond these windows being cut, you can see there's a step down. See that depth there? It continues all the way along the side and quite a bit on this side. That's also removing material, adding to uh, an overall much lighter slide. And the coating runs inside and out. We have a bit of a taper cut here, cutting off some of that metal. Now I don't have a Gen 3 34 to compare with, but when you look at the Gen 4 with uh, this snap coming all the way to the end, uh, unnecessarily that's adding some weight up front. Up front white does help with uh, muzzle flip a little bit, but uh, that can also get in the way of holstering, whereas this between that bowl cut on both sides and that edge there, missing a holster uh, is really gonna be purely user error, not, um, not anything related to uh, the slide cut. For racking and checking, we've got some nice serrations here that are not too sharp. They're kind of rounded edges, so nothing's gonna be snagging or hurting, but there's plenty of ridges to grab onto. The internals are stock standard Glock at this point, and we of course don't have sights on there yet or an optic. We'll be figuring out what comes on there later. A quick demonstration, something that I thought was interesting in looking at these two signs, and I do admit, yes, the one on the right is a Gen 4 and the one on the left is a Gen 3, but to give you an idea of what kind of weight savings we have, this is a uh, lone wolf barrel that of course has no fluting to it. And if our camera will show it, we're looking at about 4.5. If we swap on the Zafiri, now we're looking at 4.3. So we do have a weight savings from that fluting for sure. The bigger weight savings, once again, Gen 4, and this set does have sights on it, but uh, I don't think sights add too much weight. We're looking at 13.4. Zafiri minus sights ten point seven. So combined, you're saving quite a bit of weight with this Zafiri setup. And uh, as I mentioned before, that weight is reciprocating mass. Um, it's also what you whip out of the holster to take a shot. And the the less weight you have, the quicker you can move it. Maybe the less stable maybe more recoil in total gun weight, but less slide weight and barrel weight, uh, the slide being your reciprocating mass, that's gonna be a smoother shooter. So this will be an exciting thing to get out and try. Once we get some sights on there or an optic, we'll uh, run it through our full battery of tests and uh, see how it does. I'm curious to hear from any of you if you've had any experience with this company before uh, or who you prefer to use. In my experience, I've used Lone Wolf back in their early days and uh, all the way to a couple years ago. And then of course, L2D. But uh, this uh, Zafiri setup looks pretty solid to me. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And thanks for watching.